Okay. Welcome everyone to the April uh, meeting of the acquisition SIG for um, in uh, Koha US. Um, uh, at our last meeting, we kind of did a demo of ordering both using EDI and not using EDI. And someone suggested that we do a demonstration of receiving both using EDI and not EDI. So that's what we are going to do today. Um, so um, we're going to let Marcy go first and demonstrate uh, receiving if you don't have the EDI set up or, you know, like us, we've got EDI for some vendors, but not all vendors. Um, so we'll let Marcy, uh, Marcy, no, Michelle, gosh, sorry, Marcy, you probably had a heart attack. Um, <laughs> yes, Marcy was definitely having a heart attack. Uh, I'll be happy to help with that sometime, but with maybe a little more prep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Michelle, let's try that again. It's, you know, I'm having a day with M words here. Uh, that's Michelle. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not doing it. Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the word Marcy and big black and white letters there, and that's what I said. Um, okay, so Michelle is going to t walk us through that. So Michelle. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Everyone's all ready to go. Come on, click. Share. There it goes. All right. So first, I'm going to walk you through what I do when I first train somebody is first, you're going to need your records. So either you're getting them through an email or you're getting them from an FTP server. So in the case of me, I'm getting them from an FTP server. So you're going to download your file because it's kind of important for receiving because you need your complete records. And we're going to go back to Koha and go to two. Oh, sorry. I'm so used to doing it. The my, um, oh my goodness. And we're gonna stage our mark records for import right here. We're gonna find our records. And you should probably have some sort of idea what these records contain. I know that these are ordered from a certain type of order basket. So I have certain things I choose here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look for my matching, which is I match on the Koha Biblio number. I'm going to replace the existing record with the incoming record because it's going to have the complete information, no caps, no on order. It's going to be a beautiful, complete record. And I'm going to replace my items since I did order these the EDI way, but I'm not receiving them the EDI way. Um, I've only ever used replace and ignore because everything else will just duplicate your items. I don't know why, if they just do. So we're gonna do replace and I'm gonna hit stage for import. And it thinks. So I have 10 records staged and I got 10 item records found in stage. So I'm gonna click manage stage records. And I choose my framework, which is gonna be my books framework. I'm gonna make sure I can see everything and make sure everything has a match that matches the name because sometimes it has happened where it just didn't match on the right item and it was a lovely mess. And then you're gonna hit import your batch into the catalog. Now we are not receiving these items today because um, they are still in the mail. I have different items to receive. I wanted to show you the full step of receiving. All right, so now they're all beautiful and they all matched. So now we're gonna actually go into acquisitions and receive them for different items. So I'm going to choose my vendor baker. And I'm going to click receive shipment. And we're going to type in the invoice because you should have a paper invoice. Mm -hmm. 
And then this is where it gets really, really, really slow. Um, in 2105, um, I can write it into the chat too. Uh, 20212 is the bug number. This is gonna be much faster. Um, it is not there yet. And that's like what, another year off. <laughs> And yes, and right now it gets slower the more items you have on order in your vendor. And since we are in the tail end of our fiscal year, it's actually really fast. We've actually crashed our Koha to the point where you couldn't even load anything and had to like try over and over to get into your invoice to receive a little bit of items to get underneath the arbitrary, this is too many items to load, we're just gonna crash. Ah, there it goes. Now that slowness is every single time you find an item. So I'm gonna show you, so this right here is the last four of the ISBN. You can search by basket if you wanted to. Oops, which is right here. I'm gonna erase that. And I'll show everything that's in this basket. Um, I don't know how big the basket is. Sometimes it could be 50 items and it's not any faster to search by basket. So I always do the last four of the ISBN and that will also prevent you receiving say the same title, but the wrong item because as you noticed earlier when I was in those records, all those demon slayers had the exact same title. If I typed in demon slayer, I don't know what I'm receiving. <laughs> so I always go by the last four of the ISBN. And I'm gonna go over here, I'm going to, um, oh my goodness, what was I doing? Corp stock, where is it? 3572, where is, all right, so we have a question here. I can't find this item. Mm -hmm. So hold on one second. We're gonna figure out what it's actually called. Oh, it's called Groundbreaking Woman. <laughs> the cover says Corp stock, so I saw that. All right, so it's actually this one. And I'm gonna click and open it in a new tab. Otherwise that, what was it? 30, 40 second slowness was every single time you're receiving an item. And I don't have time for that. So then I have three items that are right here on my cart. And the price is $19.99 for the MSRP or the replacement price. $10.89 for what we're actually gonna pay. Now I'm gonna hit save. Now you can watch this thing like cycle for 40 seconds or you can just go on with your life and go on to your next item. If I had to wait, I would never get anything done. And this one is, what is this? Cold fire, where's cold fire? There it is. And you see this one and it's still thinking. You see that it's still thinking on the other one. I'm already on book two. And we got 17, 980, perfect, save. Still thinking we're on the third one now. And 5045, Shadow Hills. And on the final one, I will receive without opening a new tab. So my final record is going. And I'm gonna show you one more thing while this is working. So you see this little edit item right here? One of my coworkers prefers to uh, manually edit every single item. But if you have a 20, 30, 40 item invoice, you're gonna have 80 tabs. So I don't like to do it the way she does it, but you can go in here and make sure everything matches. You got the correct call number, the correct barcode. If you have your copy number for the volume for the graphic novel, everything looks good and you can hit save and then go back to this one and actually receive it. But I like to receive everything from my invoice first and then go back by scanning in the ISBN separately. It's just easier for me to manage tab hell. <laughs> and we're gonna hit save. And then we're gonna wait like 40 seconds or so. Very slowly. But that is how you're gonna order non-EDI. Um, as I said, 2105, it's supposed to be a whole lot faster. It's going to be a lovely, beautiful day when that happens. And I hope it actually is truly faster, not just like arbitrarily, oh, we saved you like 20 seconds because they did some sort of Koha upgrade. I don't remember how long ago, and it did get marginally faster. That was years ago, though. 
And it still thinks. Yep. Don't be like our library. Just do EDI invoicing and ordering at the same time. It saves you so much time. All right, we're finally done. So we have $91 that we're paying, which is perfect, matches my invoice. I'm going to click Finish Receiving. And here's where we add in the processing fee. I did see that some people had it right here, which I totally want to do that at some point. I need to figure out how to do that or put in a ticket either or. And if anybody knows how to hide all these old funds, that would be beautiful. You can totally mention it to me. <laughs> after this. So this is my processing fee of 3906. I'm going to add it. And I'm going to add another one for my tax. I'm going to hit and then convert and update it. All right, so now my total invoice in Koha matches my paper invoice of so 14064. And I'm going to hit close and I'm going to hit save. And that is how you receive EDI or receive orders not using EDI and not in like two seconds. And there you guys go. Any go. questions? No? A question. Uh, this oh. is Marcy, the Alma's presenter. Um, <laughs> back to when you imported that um, final record, yeah. I noticed you were matching on the Biblio number. Yep. Tell me how that was set up with your vendors, because we are matching on ISBN, which can cause problems mm -hmm. with the overlaying. So, so is, the, is the Biblio number going back and forth? during the EDI ordering and? Yes, that it is. It, it does go back and forth. So if I had um, the creation of Baker and Taylor predates me, but we are in the process of trying to bring on Ingram and they point blank told us that they could not match on bib note okay. on the Biblio number okay. uh, until their new magical upgrade goes through sometime yeah, in the yeah, future. Yeah. Then I could probably give you more insight because I'll know exactly okay. how that setup happens okay. right now it i do know it got added in somewhere into um the record even if we do not order edi like we don't do midwest they have a way of matching not not that okay. midwest sorry baker and taylor when we order the automatically yours i think they mentioned one time to me that they use mark edit some function functionality of it to reach out to our catalog, find the order record with the biblio number and then bring it into their processing and match okay. it because our automatic orders are not ordered EDI at all. They're just magical. Did they just arrive? But since I get an, uh, an Excel file that says what titles are coming, I can put it in a Koha first. So I don't know what they do. It's some magic. I wish I could tell you. Okay. I'll, um. I'll check with them. We're just checking Baker and Taylor on as a vendor. My main vendor is Grodart. So I'll definitely be talking with both mm -hmm. those companies and eventually Ingram about that. Yep, it's doable. I just don't know how it was. And I know Ingram said it is doable at some point, just not in their middle of their great migration. Got it. Um, yep. Yeah, I think that we also have, I was just asking the same question because right now we are uploading our mark record based on ISBN. Mm -hmm. so, and also it, it, it gives that duplicate number and it's, it's, quite, it's quite hard to find sometimes also you have to, and how you are doing is kind of like a very smooth than what we are doing currently. Yep. I have a question, good morning. Mm -hmm. Under adjustments ID, the 4039, is that something you created? Is that those codes? And then 4040 for taxes? Wait. Which part? Right where I am Just, right now? Uh -huh. You put in the amount for the processing fees, but those ID codes, oh. the 4039. I think they just automatically create. Uh, let's see here, update. Yeah, it just, I guess it just, it just adds in their ID. We've only started doing this um, back in 
July. So I've never actually looked at this right here. I never noticed it. <laughs> but it probably would make it easy to figure out how to call it out in um, through a report, I bet you. Yeah, those are probably your database keys. So the it automatically generates that key so that then you can run queries on it. Okay. Thank you. Anything else before I hand it off back off to Rhonda? Or I should say Holly in this case, I think she's yeah. doing the next part. All right, I'm gonna stop my share. Okay, so Holly. Um, Holly's gonna show how to do it with, with uh, how to receive with EDI. When, when we've, um, we've ordered these things, EDI, and then we also receive them. So she's gonna do a lot of hand waving because a lot of the stuff comes under the covers. And um, yeah, take her away. Can't hear you. You have this, the sound on your um, computer, is that turned up? Okay. There you go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tell me, uh, do you have something that you want me to use as an example for? No, um, maybe just something that received, you know, that came in like yesterday or the day before. Received EDI. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me, um, let me, uh, yeah. Okay, so let me grab something out of my files real quick. Okay, while you're doing that, I can kind of describe, you know, some of the stuff. So you saw Michelle, we, we saw Michelle go to an FTP server and grab the MARC records off of that um, and then pull them in and receive them. Um, what happens with um, the invoices or, you know, the mark records. And then Michelle just had the paper copy of the, the invoice and nothing, to, you know, had to go in and actually receive the records um, individually on that. So um, with EDI invoicing, there is an FTP server. We get our mark records through email from Ingram and... Midwest tape as well? No? Um, uh, yes, for Midwest tape, Ingram, um, Jason oh. will get them from the server. I email him the OE numbers and then he gets the records that correspond. Okay. So we load those into the uh, catalog. Um, we can show that it's similar to what um, Michelle does. And then our invoices actually show up on an FTP service and Ingram and all our EDI vendors will send our electronic invoices to an FTP server. And then the COHA checks that server periodically. And when it finds something there, we'll pull it in and actually receive all of the things. 
that were on that invoice. So do you have an example, Holly? Sure. So um, <clears throat> with Ingram, uh, who we do um, our EDI, we EDI order with, um, they email me invoices pretty much every day. And so every, every day when I come in, I print out whatever invoices they've sent me for that day. And then I check them against um, what Koha is showing for that day. So um, let me share my screen if I can. Oops, Daisy, sorry. Let's see. Where is my option? There we go, Bam. Okay. So let's make that a little smaller. Okay, can you see my Koha screen here? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Let me pull that back up. Okay. Oh, okay. No, I don't want to do that. Let's see. Let me try that again. Okay. Let's see. There. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now you've got my screen. Okay. So um, I've got my invoices they sent me. I print them out. So that's what I'm expecting to arrive in the next couple of days. Um, so then to double check it against what's been received in COA, I go to reports. Um, there is a specific report number um, that I just type in invoice because <laughs> I've never bothered to, re to remember the report number. And it's going to be right down here just a bit. And it says show invoices and their total for a given day. And so that's the one that I want to run. And I'm just going to put in the date of the invoices. These are from April 14th. And my vendor. They're all going to be specific to Ingram. And so this is everything that we received from Ingram from that day. Um, it's going to be broken up by the different um, accounts we order on that we can take a look at. Uh, maybe one of the larger ones here. This is going to be a nonfiction one. This is um, an adult nonfiction order, the invoice that it corresponds to, and then everything that was on that invoice. So um, a little bit of a larger one. They're not always quite that big. <laughs> um, and then our total. So these items, um, we can click on, you know, something in here just to take a peek and see if it's being shown. So yeah, now it's it's not for loan. It's in processing for us. But it's it's no longer in that on order status because it's it's been received. And we didn't do anything to change that. It just changed when um, once that invoice hits Koha and then Jason does his magic with our records. So really not a whole lot of work on our end. It's just double checking the paperwork, making sure that I have all the invoices that it thinks that we should have and then making sure everything matches up. Anything to add to that, Rhonda? <laughs> no, those look like we have interest in the report though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, what I, we can do it um, a couple different ways. We could, I could copy paste it into the chat um, or, and or I can email it um, to, let me see if I can find it. Or do you want to, since you've got it up there, Holly, do you want to put it in the chat? report we use uh, show invoices in our total for a given day. It's number 914. Yes. And then, um, okay, so. Can you go, go over to, to the, show SQL? Yeah, so go over to um, the yeah. little up arrow uh, no, on the line, like 914, that line, and then follow it all the way over to the, you see the run button, and then there's that little up arrow. Yeah, yeah, so you, yeah, click that. All right, so the, the, here. Let me share, let me share my screen a minute. Mm -hmm. We will. 
is it? Screen two, share. Okay, so we'll have to go, oops, get you guys off there. Can you see my screen? All right. Um, uh, reports. Oh, I'm not logged in yet. All right, so we did, we did, uh, was it 914? Okay, so um, go over here and then do show and all right, there it is. So I'm going to copy this and then find my Oh, when you're sharing your screen, everything moves to a different spot. Um, all right, there it is. All right, so I am going to put this in the chat. And there's a great big long thing there. So you can grab that. Um, From, from the chat and hopefully it will work. Did you post that to everyone, Rhonda? It looks like it. Oh, you're right. I didn't post that to everyone. Okay, let's try it again. Um, all right, there. Did everybody get it that time? Okay. This is something that Bywater wrote for us, so. If you want it tweaked or something like that, you know, you can definitely go in there and and do that. Um, I will stop sharing. So for I don't know. I guess receiving um, the the caveats or whatever for the EDI receiving is. The system, um, Ingram will ship the boxes and send the invoice on, on the same day. So we get the invoice the same day that the boxes ship usually, or maybe, yeah. And so the boxes don't actually show up till what, two days, three days later, depending. Um, so what we have in our system as the receive date is actually two days, three days before the stuff actually shows up, you know, before we actually have them. So if you're tracking, you know, door to floor time or something like that, you need to keep that in the back of your mind that you've got a hard two days for sure of, you know, you're, you won't be able to get it out on the floor. You know, there's going to be a two-day lag between when it's received and when um, the earliest that you can actually get it uh, processed and, and out on the floor. But other than that, it just really seems to be, it works. And, and we have it we, uh, Texas, we don't have to pay uh, sales tax, so we don't have any sales tax processing. We do have the processing of, um, you know, Ingram's processing. So just depending on the two vendors, um, the invoices come in, and I, Holly, correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, Ingram, we have the processing is a separate entry in the record or in the invoice and Midwest tape, um, each item has the processing uh, worked into the cost of the item. So there isn't a separate. They know they itemize it for us oh, on the, they? okay. Yeah. But I mean, it's usually um, uh, because we are granular with our orders. Like it's only DVDs on one order, or only CDs on another order. It's kind of like a flat fee at the bottom just per item gets kind of tied to how we order with specific groups of items you know okay and then 
uh, with find a way we do um, occasionally need to go in and add processing costs. Sometimes that comes through on the invoice and sometimes not, but um, it's very, it's very easy to add and adjust those things in Koha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we saw, can you show them how you do that? Because it's a little bit different from what Michelle did. Um, because she does the add uh, thing. And that's, that's kind of a new uh, function um, in, in Koha. So we um, did it slightly differently. If you wanna show them that, Holly. Okay. Um, all right, so we are back in Koha. And invoices. Let's see this one. So I've got my find a way invoice that they have emailed me. So we'll just uh, double check to see if we need to adjust the processing cost. And this one is actually good. They've included the processing cost on here. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but if we needed to change it, we would just add it here, match the fund to our children's books on CD and play away, and then close the invoice um, once we know we have this item. So um, that's that's all there is to that. You can you can add in the processing, but in this case we don't need to. And then just close it and you're good. Okay, so any more, any questions about the actual receiving, what that's like? Um, there is a bug, Ooh, I can't remember now what the number is, eight something, I remember that because it's such an old bug, um, that is, uh, um, that's to add the function to receive multiple items at one time. Um, when we, when Michelle, Holly, and I were looking at it earlier, uh, I guess last week, um, it is in failed QA right now. So um, hopefully that'll get moving. But it's, yeah, it's got a really, really old bug number. I think if I remember right, it, the bug was written in 2012, I think. Um, so if, if, um, Ah, eight, okay, 8179 is the bug number. So if you want to go to that bug and say, hey, you know, let's keep this one moving or whatever, um, you won't have the multiple tab issue. Um, you'll be able to just go through and click, 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 click. These are all the ones I want to receive, you know, and then it'll, it'll go through the process that way instead of having to go back each time for each, you know, each one processing one at a time. So that would be a great enhancement for everybody. Um, and the other thing, oh, some, um, the question came up to, let's see, um, oh, hide old funds. That was what it was. So, let me see if hmm, I can't even find my browser. All right, there we go. So I think um, I may have to do some digging around here to find this. But I think if you go, um, probably not. I'm not so sure. Um, so maybe somebody that has these showing up, um, do you go in and make your old budgets inactive afterward? Okay. Yep. All right. So there's something similar that you do with funds. Um, or do, Holly, do we still have do we? Now I'm starting to question. 
when you pull up, um, yeah, when you pulled up the, the funds to select from, you just saw this year's funds, right? I think because we make the old budgets inactive, is it the budgets that go inactive or do you have to do something with each fund? I can't remember. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the part. We only do it once a year, so it's always. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we discover it each year. Hey, Rhonda. Yeah. This is Marcy. Mm -hmm. I make my old budgets inactive, but I also append the year of the inactive year to the fund codes because with EDI, even if the budget is inactive, if the fund codes are the same, you will have orders that will hit the wrong budget. Found that out the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, so when I make a budget inactive, I go in and append the former year to each of those fund codes in the inactive budget. And then you don't have to change your fund codes every year with your vendors. Right. Okay. So those are the actual, the actual codes that you're talking about. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause we use the same fund code. We just use a different fund name. Um, so we append the year to the fund name so that we know which year it is. Mm -hmm. And do you, do you um, close out your year at the end, Marcy? I do. Okay. Um, I do. Because that, that's when, you know, like we'll roll stuff over right. to the next year and... And that seemed to take care of the issue that we had with, you know, stuff coming in in for for us, you know, for you guys too. Um, you know, October first is yeah. our first of the year, and you know, if we'd have something come in on October fifteen, um, it would unless we closed out the previous budget that item, which was probably ordered back in you know September or something. Right. Would, would get charged to last year's budget, which was a terrible thing. Um, but it seemed like when, when we closed out the year and rolled everything forward um, into the following, the new year, um, that sort of took care of that problem for us. Yeah, I had closed the budget and I had made it inactive and I still had things hitting that budget instead of my active budget when the fund codes were the same. So that's when I started, hmm. just after I roll over the budget and make the old one inactive, I just go in and append that number to each of the codes so that there's no way Koha can get confused. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, okay. Now there may be another way to accomplish that, um, that you're doing something else that makes that happen. Yeah. And again, we do it once a year, what, Jason. I know. You can definitely hide things from dropdown lists with jQuery. I've been legit trying to figure out where you guys got that dropdown list and I can't because oh. <laughs> I don't do enough acquisition stuff. Um, I can show it again. Okay, can you show me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I have a question. When you created the budgets, though, you know how it has a start date and an end date? Mm -hmm. Do you, are you putting that end date in on the budgets? Yeah. Yeah. But my understanding is those dates are kind of for show. Yeah. And for information only, they really don't affect the processing. Um, you know, like if it sees that that budget has an end date that's already passed, mm -hmm. the system doesn't really care. You know, oh, okay. Just do whatever. Because that's what I have, but I also have the um, high, the old funds and budgets and make inactive, so. Okay. Don't so when you, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to show uh, Jason real quick. So we have our only one active budget, which is the fiscal year 21, 
we have our old inactive budgets and if we try to hit close, it says it's closed. There's no unreceived orders back. Um, we do leave our fiscal years with a, um, well, these are the really, really old ones way back in the day. We'll do a more recent one. These ones will say what year, oh. so we don't ever match on old years when we order EDI mm -hmm. or order anything. We say they're correct funds, so we'll always match on the correct fund. Um, if that ma if that might matter, um, since Marcy doesn't have years, it sounded like in hers. Um, so our f current fiscal year will say fiscal year twenty one. So everything will hit on this fund, but when I re in this case in the adjustments field. Uh, it will show every single fund that ever existed. Um, oh, wow. We okay. can also see that in creating a basket, when you're adding a fund to a basket, it will show every single fund that ever was created too. Okay, so if you right click on where it says fund, like to the left of that, and inspect element. Um, so, Scroll all the way to, in this little window that came up. Scroll all the way to the top of it, just for a second. Okay, so this is, you see where it says body ID is a CQ invoice. Yep. We can tell it only do the jQuery on that. Now scroll back down to where it was highlighted. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is, okay. Okay, so, oh, hold on just a second. So this is gonna be budget, the ID is budget ID. Are you gonna put it in the chat? Yeah, I will. I just All need right. to. Okay, so now see that little arrow on the highlighted line? Yep. Okay, click on that. So these are all your option values. Uh, so um, a bit bigger. <laughs> so there's probably an even easier way to do this, mm -hmm. but if just for the sake of whatever, um, say you want to, if you click on the first one where it says option value 86, click on the little arrow next to it to the um, left yeah, there it is. so that that's your adult book on cd 16. Okay. so if that's the one you want to hide you would mm -hmm. put um i'll put it in the chat here something like that would hide it from the um from this page specifically and that option specifically so you could repeat that line where i've got um budget ID, new option value 86, and do it again. <laughs> like add another line in there. Um, so let me... And that would go in the administration function under uh, which part of the? the? You would put this in the um, internet user JS. Internet. I can put that in the chat too. Okay. I don't um, go there very often because I don't really know jQuery, so. I can go in yeah. there and look, but I don't touch usually. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just. So this will only affect that page. So if you want the other page you mentioned where it shows up, um, you could you could duplicate it again, mm -hmm. um, and just change where it says. So this is what I'm talking about. Like you could okay. do budget ID option value one, two, three, mm -hmm. and hide those, um, and that goes in. Internet user JS sysprof, um, and then on the other screen you would just change that first ID where it says ACQ underscore invoice to whatever the ID is for that other page. Um, and if there are other drop downs you want to change it out of, mm -hmm. you could switch that where it says budget ID new. You could switch it. So like if you scroll up, you've got that shipping drop down. Um, if you need to hide it there, you would change it there. That kind of thing. Michelle. Yeah. Okay. When nice. when you're finished mm -hmm. with that, can you show me your funds page? You know, underneath administration, it's got budgets and then funds. Can yeah. you show me your funds? Okay, and then scroll. Oh. Okay. This is our current year. Do you need an older year? Um, so you don't have funds. Okay. So when we you click, click click on the Oh, this is, it looks different. Um, I'm in like so, the actual, does it help if I go into? Yeah, go, it, wait, wrong view. Oh, oh, take the budget. Yeah, take the budget um, drop down. Sorry, okay. okay. So, so this is, funds, uh -huh. 
So go to funds. Yeah. Okay. Maybe thinking. Yeah. Everyone's taking notes, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So scroll down. Looks like ours too. Okay. I just can't figure out why we don't see all of the years and you guys do. Because I we didn't put the J jQuery in there. It's only viewable in certain spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so you did the. Hmm. I'm going to have to figure that out. I know we asked that question. No. Can I ask you one question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone is showing that um, the budget thing, we currently have um, wrong calculation. If you want, I can share that. I actually yeah. placed a ticket, but I think uh, since you all are talking, it's um, currently have been happening with Ingram. Um, if you guys want, I can share this screen. So if mm -hmm. anyone is having the same issue. Um, see. Uh, yep. So this is the, actually, this is the ticket that we have uh, placed with buy water. Um, and it is, we are doing EDI with Ingram. And as you can see, that actually is like whoever is receiving the item, she has created that. So she just, you know, um, mark it down four quantities, but it's doing like 15. So I was just thinking, are we missing something? If anyone has, have any idea. Also, that one is also the same. We have actual prices $8.99 and then quantity three, but the, the calculation is $26.98. Um, I, think, I think we have two. Oh, the three, yeah. And the another one is also um, $4.79, but uh, with three quantities and we are getting $14.38. Those are all Ingram standing order, but we are using EDI. Hmm. Where's my calculator? <laughs> yeah. We had we had something similar where where with multiple quantities, the mm -hmm. prices weren't getting calculated right. Um, and it was related, it was mostly, and I don't know if this is true for this or not, but it mostly happened in the cases where, you know, let's say for this lost gallows, let's say we really or ordered five of them and they got shipped to us in two separate shipments. Um, the first shipment that would come in would be calculated correctly, but then the second shipment would be, um, it would be just some random number. Um, and it turned out they were using, um, and I don't know how you do this, but we, when we set up Ingram, we just use a um, like 25% discount kind of across the board for everything. Um, to calculate, to estimate what the cost will be for the, when, when we order it. Um, and so that number is never accurate. It's just a guesstimate. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. So that's why we picked, you know, 25% um, kind of middle of the road, but it was taking that number and multiplying it by whatever else came, you know, however, in this case, three quantity came in instead of using the actual cost of the, um, the item, like, you know, the 899. It so, looks, sorry, it looks like it's off by a penny in both. It's just one penny off more, mm -hmm. like 26.97 and the other one 14.37. 
So weird. But there's no taxes added to it. So because yeah. I had that problem and it was because of the tax. And some people were 9.24 as opposed to 9.25. Um, but this one does not include any taxes. So mm. Mm. Did, does my order a... give you a bug or anything on this? Sorry. Uh, oh yeah, um, I actually placed the ticket yesterday. No, it was in. It was given to D, uh, Donna, but uh, no, haven't got any response yet. You you might ask them about. I think I, I'm looking through the bugs. Um, floating point math. I know that there were problems with that in the mm -hmm. accounting area with fines and stuff, where like it's the floating point math is off, so it's actually rounding it up, but it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there, there may be something in the code there. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, we had that uh, last week and also before one, also the same, like Jason mentioned, it seems like that we are having, yeah, it seems like the bug issue, one penny or something like that, not a big one though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't remember exactly what it, it was doing, but it was like, going off into infinity and then rounding the number up like it was like your total point zero 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 whatever um there's something in koha that, that um rounds it when it shouldn't be rounding and they fixed it in the in the fines area but it seems like maybe that's what it's affecting this here and i doubt they would think to look at acquisitions for the same problem maybe i don't know it's an idea at least what do you suggest then to reach out to them with the uh, with the bug or? Um, I don't think there's an actual bug. I think it's just that's the terminology they're using. So maybe reply to the ticket and let them know that it seems like it's rounding up and maybe the floating point math is off. Okay. Because I'm not seeing a bug specifically for acquisitions on it. Thank yeah, because because the one that's showing, you know, the actual cost is all the same, but you're seeing a variety, you know, it's 30, 1536, 1537, 1535, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's off that that would what Jason is saying that that would make sense that it's kind of a, a rounding error or something. Yeah, the most recent bug is about lost items that have the floating point math. And that was from March 11th, 2020, with the most recent update of April 9th. But nothing about acquisitions at all about it. It's just regular fines and fees. Yeah, I just wonder if like there's like a module that Koha uses to do that and it's not being applied for acquisitions yet. I would add to, this is Marcy again, um, sometimes after a COHA upgrade, your EDI will need some tweaking. So with this last upgrade, our Midwest invoices just quit working properly. Um, and it had, it's similar to the problem that you're experiencing with the, the actual cost and the total cost not adding up. So what I think happened when we first set up Midwest about three years ago, Kyle at Bywater did some, they couldn't send it the way they needed it sent. So he created some customization in our plugin to solve those issues. And it, it probably got knocked back to a default setting with the upgrade. Um, so I've been working with Midwest again um, to see if they could now send it in the way that Koha needs it. And I just now got invoices from February to come in correctly. So I think next time we upgrade, I'm going to screenshot all of the plugins just to make sure that I can tell what's going on to better troubleshoot it or have Bywater troubleshoot it. Mm 
Okay. Thanks, Marcy. Yeah, that's a good point, Marcy. I think we had the same issue um, after upgrade. Um, we are missing our, we have like vendor, but we have <laughs> tons of vendor, like, you know, Ingram, but we have, I don't know, it's like we are in under county. So we have different fund and then under fund, we have different vendors. So we have like tons of tons of vendor under Ingram, you can say. So like one main, but it has a lot of branches. So we send the branches, but we, we don't, we are unable to get back. So we are having that issue after the upgrade and Kyle have been working, but we just gave up. We thought, okay, that's fine. As long as our paper is okay, we can match it up. But then last week it's happening, uh, the money issue, like, you know, one penny. And as you know, that when you implement some new thing and it is quite like everyone gets so much like, you know, what's going on. So yeah, yeah. I can relate that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it is at the top of the hour, whatever hour you have and, um, if you have ideas for next, um, next month's meeting, please let me know. Um, otherwise I will just randomly pick something. And um, yeah, thanks for coming, participating. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Michelle slash Marcy for um, demonstrating. <laughs> and um, we will see you all next month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.